Hi there, my name's Ryan and uh, I am a teacher in Southern Ontario uh, in one of the big public school boards just outside Toronto. And uh, I love using technology in my classroom and wanted to show you a video, uh, you know, created by a teacher who's actually used the program inside my own classroom. Uh, I have a grade five class this year, so uh, my students are 10 years old and I've used cahoots uh, just this year. I haven't used them with uh, students younger inside the classroom. I have used them at home though with my six-year-old. Uh, he's in grade one and uh, he can navigate the program pretty seamlessly. So anyways, I want to show you uh, an alternative way of assessing students and it really boosts the engagement factor inside a classroom and makes it a heck of a lot more fun. It also streamlines your own assessment because the fact that the program marks for you, I mean, it's pretty cool when you just have to click a button and you get the tallied marks of 25 students, you know, with three seconds. So anyways, let me show you uh, how to go ahead and create one, okay? The website that your students are gonna access is right here. You are going to access this one because this will allow you to create one, okay? I want to make this as user-friendly as possible, even starting from the Google Home screen. Uh, this is my own class account, uh, a personal account rather. I have 20 that I've made. Inside our class Gmail account, uh, we have uh, 85 that the students have created. And the students create them, you know, as part of projects. They create them as, you know, for a variety of reasons. Some of them are just for fun, but uh, we, we have a class Gmail account set up as well. So this is my data bank here of my own. This is a public Kahoot. Uh, there's over, it looks like 2 million, 2.165 million Kahoots available. So you can go ahead and check those out if you're up for it. To create one, you go down to the bottom here and you click on quiz. Uh, you give it a name. We'll say YouTube246. And it takes you to your home screen. Okay, so question one, let's do something like two plus two equals. Down here, I'm gonna put in my answers. Two, three, four, and five. Okay, now I'm gonna add another question. I want obviously two questions in my assessment, but it's gonna give me a little red warning box up at the top, okay? And what it's saying is that I need to have at least one correct answer. I haven't told the program what the right answer is, and that's really important for the game to go smoothly and for your own marking sake. So I'm going to say that four is correct and I will add another question. I have laryngitis and a cold, so my apologies for uh, if I sound a bit twangy. Question two, let's do something like uh, a true false. Is the cheetah the fastest land animal yes no we'll get rid of these guys we don't need them yes it's true add another question let's do uh, in grade five social studies I have to teach uh, government so we'll do a government question what is it called when citizens can choose their own government. Democracy is what we've learned. Communism, and I have no idea. <laughs> okay, so we'll leave it at that. And then we'll do a question where you can have more than one answer, okay? Uh, what is the weather outside? What's the weather like outside today? And you can see I've done a four question Kahoot in about two minutes. It, it really doesn't take very long to do. I could do one quicker than I could write one, to be completely honest with you. And then I've got to run to the photocopier and wait in line, which is a pain in the butt. I wrote pain. <laughs> uh, sunny, cloudy, warm, cold. 
let's make them all correct. And that way, every student in the class, as long as they press something, they will get it correct. Okay, we'll stop there. So we've got four questions. If you want to add a picture of a sun or you want to add a picture of something, you can choose your file here. If you want to add a video, it's really cool with YouTube videos because you can insert a YouTube video of a lab experiment. You can cue it to start at a certain time and end at a certain time. And then you could pose a question about the lab experiment, which is really cool. We'll save and continue. If you want to toss your questions around, you know, change the order, you can go ahead and do that as well. Save. Primary audience is for school. I believe this is just for the Kahoot's own data about where they're being used. You want to put a cover image, you know, while students are logging into the Kahoot, you can do that as well. If you want to play a fun video, you can play the video. I'll click done and I can launch it right from here or I can go back to my home screen and I can go to my cahoots. This is the one I just created. It's all finished. I can play it. I can launch it right from here. One thing I want to point out, if you're going to play your cahoot two or three times in a row, I would randomize the order of the questions and randomize the answers. And what that will do is that when you get to your second time, even your third time, students are not remembering that the answer for number three is blue, and therefore they stop reading the answer and they stop reading the question. They can just, you can randomize it, and that way it tosses, you know, some fun into it as well. So I'm going to launch that. I'm going to turn my volume right down. Okay. It does a randomly generated game pin, and it sometimes you know it's three letters, some or three numbers. Sometimes it's six. Students are going to go to Kahoot.it. I believe I have it open here. Okay. And what they do is they enter in the game pin. Okay. So let me toss this off to the side. Students are going to enter in. Three seven seven zero three zero, and what I think will happen is that it will not let me in. It'll just spin. So I've got a computer right beside me here, and I'm going to log into that one as well. Okay. So I've got three seven seven zero three zero. Student presses enter. They put in a nickname. Uh. Ryan the Great. Okay, join the game. Let's see if I can get in. Oh, I got in. Sweet. Okay, so there you go. So on my other computer here, I will play this twice. I don't think it's going to let me play the Kahoot with two screens open, but uh, we'll try. Okay, the other person is Allison. Join the game, Allison, and there's Allison logged in. You can have up to 100 players, maybe 200 players. I'm not sure how many in total. I've seen it used uh, with as much as 80. Okay, so um, I'm going to, let's pretend that Ryan makes an inappropriate name. I can kick him out by scrolling over his name. And then Ryan will just be prompted to re-enter another game pin. Okay, I'm going to play it with just one person. So start now. So what the student sees are the student will see the question up on the projector and then on their own screen they're going to see only four colors. They're going to see a great big red, blue, yellow and green. This big giant picture. Okay? And they will click Oh, I pressed it by I pressed red by accident. Okay, so yellow is the correct answer. Okay? Oh, it looks like I pressed green. Okay, so Allison got zero points. She got the answer incorrect. Okay, is this cheetah the fastest land animal? The student now will only see two colors. They'll see red and blue. The answer is red. So on my computer, I'm going to press red, and I get it right. Okay, students can use iPads. They can use iPods. They can use, you can do this in your computer lab. You know, it really depends on whatever your situation is at school. So Allison got that correct. She got 917 Kahoot points. Now, this is what's also neat about the program. If you have 25 students and 24 of them get the right answer, I can see which five students got it answered quickest. And that is really cool because it, do, it doesn't show you how, 
doesn't tell you if they know or they copied, it can also tell you how quickly they can recall the information. So on this one, I am going to see three colors, blue, red, and yellow. I'm going to punch in red. I'll punch in blue just because it'll be wrong. You'll see that Allison got, she remains at 917. She didn't get any Kahoot points that time. The last one, they're all correct. Okay, so I'm going to try and get 1,000. Boom, that was fast. I've got a video on there. I don't know what the video is. Uh, that's it. So it shows you that they're all correct. So 1,000 points, 1,917. So the game is over. Now, I can go to end, feedback. All the students in my class can rate my Kahoot. Okay, so I gave it a five star, thumbs up, thumbs up, and I gave it a medium face. Final results, I can see Allison was the winner, obviously. She was the only one that played. Now, as a teacher, this is what is neat. You can play the Kahoot again if you've randomized the questions. You can play in the ghost form. This is brand new. I've just discovered it three weeks ago, to tell you the truth. Um, ghost, the ghost round is basically a student playing against themselves. So there will be 25 students from the first game, and then those same 25 students would log in as a different name, and they could play against themselves, which is really cool. Download the results. I can download them into my Google Drive, or I can download them into Excel. Now, I'm going to use Excel. I never use Excel, but I will use Excel just to show you as an example. I always use my Google Drive, but I have it open down here. So that will pop up. I'm going to go ahead and go into Excel, go into Recent, and it hasn't popped up yet. Okay, so just for the heck of it, I will show you what it looks like in my Google Drive. Okay, save, save it. Let me see what it looks like, and here it is. Okay, so it pulls it up in an Excel format, so I would have all 25 students in this column. I would have the number of correct answers, number of incorrect. So she got basically two out of four. It shows me that her score was 1,917. And then it tells me question by question which ones she got correct, which is really cool. Okay. So I can see she got the first one wrong. She got the second one correct. Inside Excel, you can, uh, you can open it question by question, which is really neat. Uh, all right, here, here it is. Okay, 1141, so this one is correct. So here it is opening up in Excel. Okay, now I can, down at the bottom here, I can narrow it down question by question. So I can see that for question two, she got it correct. Nobody got it wrong, which is fine. Average speed of the answer out of 30 seconds, it took them 5.6 seconds, which is really cool. Uh, all of the students got it correct. So if I've got a question where 20% of the students got it correct and then the next one, it's 100%, well, then I know I've got to go back and review the material for, you know, the second question. So anyways, there's lots more we can do with this program, but it's really, it, it gamifies your classroom. Uh, I, I saw the Google app for the Kahoot. It says that um, the Kahoot app is like PlayStation for education. And it's really gamifying your classroom. It's, it's really, really cool. Okay, so I am going to just show you quickly. If you have any questions, you can go to teachingsmarter.wix.com slash home. This is my website. I've got uh, some. I will have a resource soon. This video is actually for an online article that I'm writing on using Socrative.com, Kahoot, and Google Forms as three ways three varying ways of assessing students using technology. When that uh, article is, is posted or published, I will put a link to it. I'll also put a link to the Socrative.com video and the Google Form video as well. And I promise you they're not quite as long. If you have a Teachers Pay Teachers account and you want to get some free resources, everything in my teaching store is free. I've got about 1,200 downloads. I've got 43 people following me, so whenever I post something new, they get the email. 
and uh, I have the YouTube channel which you've seen and if you want to connect on Skype you can go ahead and call me here and finally uh, these are some of the magazines that I've been featured in as well if uh, you want to go and read those articles okay thank you for watching I hope that you find it helpful and I hope you have a great day and a great rest of the year in your classroom take care